Me, not over. <laughs> right. That's I'm glad he's here. He's gotten me out of hot water. Uh, he has. Right? You out more than him. Yes. Yeah, he actually did. I grabbed him. He was in the office one day and taking the court with him. Yeah, that did happen. It's been a few years ago. Stranger than. Thank you. 
about the sheriff's uh, salary cap form and um, it said Chief Sumner clarified that it was K-L-E-G-H. I don't think that's correct. I think it's, we'll need to check that, but that's not correct. I think he, what he said was correct, K-L-E-F-F -F maybe is the sheriff here in the 
Yes. Judge Riley? Yes. For Travis? Yes. For Jerry Moody? Yes. For Brewer? Yes. Okay. Next is communication from County Judge Executive. A few things I want to mention. Uh, we're now one week out uh, since they extended the filing deadline for candidate filing to January 25th. Uh, obviously, the Kentucky Legislature is in session as of January 4th. The House uh, one of the things that I noticed when the House had some notes about their budget that they uh, had, uh, were pushing forward and it has a, something, one thing that I noticed in there, an increase <coughs> for um, court security deputies were, were reimbursed uh, I think a rate less than $10 an hour and they're proposing to raise that to $15 so that'll help us a little bit budget wise it if uh, that passes. Uh, Rumpke has issued a new pickup uh, day list and they've got some changes. Uh, I think I've already been about all the magistrates, so uh, there have been some day changes, so just make note of that. I know that you might get a day or two, but they'll, they'll be putting that out to the residents. Um, We've gotten a couple of resignations. Uh, Victoria Shelburne at the animal shelter. Uh, her last day actually was today. Nick Wilkerson, uh, his last day is going to be January 28th. Um, and we've had another uh, gentleman at the road department that did not pass his probation. Uh, but I do have a replacement. We'll talk about that later. Um, Winter weather, we have another round of winter weather, ice and snow. Uh, the road department always, as always, I think does a fantastic job. Uh, they, uh, I think you'll notice they pre-treated the roads with brine, and they uh, ended up working about a 24-hour shift. And what happens to them, I know that the probably the foreman has explained this to some of you, not all of you, how it makes no sense to go out and start and roads and push and snow and so forth. The front part of the storm, you wait till the storm moves through, then you go do your work. So they did that, and he got a pop up snowstorm and where he had already plowed and treated with cinders that got covered again. So a lot of, some people thought the roads hadn't been treated, they had been. It's just uh, that snow covered it. Uh, we got more snow predicted for tomorrow evening. Um, we've got uh, made a list of some things. This is certainly not everything, but some pretty important issues that we're going to wrestle with uh, before the end of the, uh, the fiscal year or end of the term uh, in December. Um, and uh, I'll just run down these. We've got some FEMA projects that we have got to complete. We've got a, a deadline actually of April 1st. East River Road bridge replacement. I think it's been four years now. Uh, hopefully they're going get, to get that done. Uh, or not hopefully, they will get it done. East River Road slide repair, I think they've already worked on that. There were five smaller projects that we got no bids on that the road department has been working with and the Delta Road project. Um, we've got to prepare and pass a new fiscal year budget. Uh, the jail budget, I think, is, is a year here uh, Jail budget uh, by April 1st, and of course I have to present you all a balanced budget by May 1st, and you know I always try to do that early. Um, we will uh, be subject to the 35, 65-35 uh, rule of expenditures during the first six months of the new uh, fiscal year, uh, and that will exclude ARPA funds, which uh, according to DLG is considered grant funding. So, uh, we've got a fiscal year in the 2021 audit. Uh, we've got redistricting still, and that's based on the 2020 census. Uh, we've got a, a 
primary and general election, and then we've got a transition to a new administration. So we just wanted to mention some of those things that we'll be wrestling with. Um, only other thing I want to say, and I'm, 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 I know I'm going to get some heat on doing this publicly, but uh, we're less than two weeks away from Brittany's due date, and uh, she doesn't like for me to talk about that publicly, but uh, just to let you know, uh, she'll be uh, working this week, but uh, as of the first Monday, we'll say Monday, she will be on maternity leave, so make things a little more challenging in, in uh, the judge's office. Uh, with that, I'm going to move on to communications from citizens. Do we have any citizens that would like to address the court this evening? Uh, I've got you all on the agenda, so uh, yeah. I'd like to judge if they're not. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, we are, Judge. No, I know, but I've got you on the agenda. So. I know. No, she's not with the friends. I'm sorry? Oh. Sorry. Oh, you want. Well, that's right. You want. Uh, is, is this where we're starting? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no. Sorry. No, no, no. Ladies first. Okay. Yeah. Three months. Hey, guys. Thanks for allowing me to speak. I'm Michelle Lawson with Kentucky Animal Action. Um, actually didn't know if I was going to be speaking tonight or not, so I don't have any prepared notes, but um, I'm glad I, I've got a chance to speak because I heard you say that there were two resignations in animal control, um, Nick and Victoria, and to my knowledge, those are the only two positions in animal control or animal um, matters in the county, which is very worrisome. Um, I don't have exact dates in front of me, but from the outside looking in, it kind of seems like there's been a revolving door in animal control, and maybe it's for different reasons. I don't claim to know um, the details of every single situation. There's been some covered by the news, some not, but regardless, there's been a revolving door in animal control. And um, I was out here in the county for three days straight for um, approximately 10 hour days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, two weeks ago, to work in the Pope case and um, there were 111 dogs there and that was a very emotional case that has haunted me for most of my adult years because people have been trying to shut that down since the 1980s everybody in the state knows about it everybody there's a lot of people in the country that know about that case and as far as i know that is the longest standing hoarding slash breeding situation that I can recall to date. I don't know any other case that's been allowed to go on for 40 years. And I'm not saying that's anybody in here's fault. I'm saying there needs to be due diligence to the animals of Spencer County. And while I'm so glad that Nick and Victoria were there to help us for those three days, there was a humongous team of people that came in from all over the state to help in that 111 dog situation, help Spencer County. and. While Nick and Victoria were getting paid, the rest of the team were either here as volunteers or paid by other organizations, not by Spencer County. And, <clears throat> you know, it kind of looks like Spencer County needed rescuing themselves for a case that's been going on for almost four decades. And I'm really concerned with Nick and Victoria being um, gone. You know, I, I, I haven't known them that long but I spent 30 hours with them in three days two weeks ago and I've worked with Nick on some other stuff and they're very caring individuals and Nick was also very concerned with doing his job correctly to please you guys and also do what he needed to do for the animals um, so finding someone else I mean I, I'm sure there are plenty of people that you know could do a great job I just want to see someone who I would like to have, have an opportunity for someone to get in here that can be here for the long haul, that can do things the way you guys would like to do it, but also help the animals. Um, their previous ones, um, previous animal control officers who um, aren't here anymore, there were some great areas about them helping animals that maybe weren't dogs and cats, and <clears throat> some things went down with that. But my point is, um, we need someone who cares but can also stay and make you guys happy because um, 
I'm very concerned for Spencer County's animals, especially on the on the heels of 111 dog rescue less than two weeks ago. Let, let me stop you because you're well in excess of three minutes now. Sure. And, um, Someone gave me their other three minutes. Sorry. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. No. Yeah. You're good. You're good. I'm, I'm, I'm just about finished, so okay. yeah, I just wanted I to say what I figured you were, and yep. you're welcome to join the when they do. Yep, yeah. yep. Um, I just ask for please um, think very hard about what's going to happen with animal control from here forward. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Scott. yeah, Scott Travis, I appreciate the opportunity to address you guys. Good to see you, everyone. Uh, I want to thank you for the work you did after the snow. Uh, where I live, there's two steep hills to climb, and uh, you did pre-treat it several times, and you put the uh, cinders on it. Jerry, appreciate y'all taking care of the hills because uh, we got up and down it just fine enough, you know, for as cold as it was. But uh, a couple things, uh, I support the, the group that is working to benefit the animal uh, ordeal here in the county. And I really think we're close to the finish line between their group and what I feel you guys want to do, what we need to do to serve the community. I think we're close to the finish line. We just need to put the time in. And I thank you all for coming tonight, and I thank you guys for having it on the agenda. Uh, one other issue you want to bring up is uh, broadband. I've had a lot of people ask about broadband uh, over the last several months. <coughs> I know you guys committed to 500,000 of the ARPA funds hoping somebody would pick it up and match it with something from Frankfurt. And I uh, haven't heard anything about it for a couple months, and I just wanted to know where we might be on that. So, thank you. Anybody else uh, with the address of Fort Let's see anybody jumping out of their seat. So we're gonna move on with uh, communications reports from members, other offices, and committees. First up is the zoning, we have not. EMS Director Chris Lamp, and I know you're going to be on the agenda later, but... What we have that's not on the agenda, kind of a hot topic this week, is uh, the Blue Water Testing Facility has uh, shut down the uh, COVID testing for the public, and are moving into just testing for uh, students and school staff. We've been working with the uh, North Central Health District and Mr. Alanya Rice to uh, try to find a new company to bring into the county. And instead of duplicating services or me doing some work, her doing some work, she was on, had already been in talks with a company, and I, I just don't know the name right now. But uh, it looks like soon we will have a uh, company in Spencer County testing three days a week. As soon as we have more information on that, we'll push it out. Uh, we're going to open up the EMS building, and the, the testers will work out of the conference room at EMS. And uh, it'll be basically a drive up. Uh, testing site, kind of like what Blue Water did. They'll, they'll pull the people needing the test will pull into the EMS parking lot, and the testers will go outside and test them. So as soon as we have uh, solid information or more information, we'll get that pushed out to everybody. So uh, I know everybody's received a bunch of calls from it. Uh, I've talked to Tim, I've talked to John quite a bit. I even talked to James Allen, Tip, and they got it. So yeah, it works well. Have, Companies. One Blue Water will still be doing it for the, the, for the school system, system. And, the, and, then, uh, the and the one then, at EMS will be for county residents. Correct. Just to clarify that. So. Well, no, I don't believe it's. Uh, uh, Miss Rice from the health district had already been in contact with some uh, some other companies. When I guess they got word that Blue Water was was shutting down the public operation before we got that, so she went ahead and started looking into some companies at that time. Uh, I told her as, as long as, uh, as that she's comfortable with whichever company she chooses and that they're giving, doing the right reporting, then uh, I mean, that's, that's more her real house than ours. I just want, I just want to make sure that whoever, whoever's in the county is who we're going to send people to if they call us for tests. So I just want to make sure we're legitimate and doing the proper reporting. <coughs> okay. Safety committee reports for Last Friday, I got a, uh, an email that one of the court security officers had sat down in the chair. Uh, it had collapsed with him. He fell, hit his back, his head, uh, and I believe uh, maybe his arm. 
At that time, he was reported okay. Uh, I've got notice today that he's, he is going to seek medical attention. So that's, that's still up in the air. Also today, um, Lynn sent me a, a, a message saying that Jan Keeney had fell out here on the uh, city sidewalk out here, and she is going to require surgery. I think you said broke her elbow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. All right. It's all the waste committee. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Veterans committee reports for our brother. I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Right. Equipment committee report. I know we're going to be talking about some road equipment later on, but Jerry, if you've got anything. <coughs> Well, you want to talk now? No, <laughs> wait till we get to that on the agenda, but you know, something else. Uh, uh, what about the international truck? You know, that, that's what we're talking about. Okay. What about the tires? That, that's, in, that's in your package. Okay. Did you read your package? Oh. What's up? Uh, it's, it's on the agenda. <coughs> it's on the agenda. Look at your agenda. I did? Yeah, it's on the agenda. Okay. okay. Um, I have nothing to report. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, under new business item number three, road, uh, tires, additional repairs, international. Well, you, you can throw something else in there if you want. <laughs> All right, uh, telecommunications committees for our people. I have nothing to report. Okay, just in uh, uh, reference to a comment made earlier, the uh, broadband uh, expansion that was uh, we did commit $500,000 of ARPA money to assist uh, either uh, spectrum cable and bark sound cable. Uh, we were submitting, both have submitted uh, applications to the Kentucky Infrastructure Authority for matching funds uh, to uh, build out broadband in the county. Um, and I'm not sure where that stands with KIA at this point. So those applications are in, and the 500000 is our local commitment to help facilitate that. Um, County Clerk, got uh, some information about board elections. Like mm -hmm. okay. In the packet, um, looks like pages 67 through 72, um, this is in reference to some comments that were made at the last fiscal court meeting. And before I go into what I would like to share, I'd like to introduce our newest County Board of Election member, Josh Cole. He is a veteran, he is a trail life leader, um, and he's already spent three hours of training on our new election equipment on Friday. So, um, I shared with the Board of Election your comments about the board not being very transparent. And um, they reminded me of an invitation that we extended to you on several occasions to come and talk to the board about your plans for the election storage equipment area, and you refused to come and do that on several occasions. And I also have in here an open records uh, request that you submitted to me for four years worth of County Board of Election minutes, which I gave you without a problem, and also made it known to you that our, our minutes are public, and they're in my office, and the KRS that guides what a County Board of Election does and their duties specifically says that the minutes shall be housed in the County Clerk's office. I also shared with them a comment that was made um, asking if they got paid to meet. And I know Esquire Brewer made that comment. Ask that question, yes. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I wanted to share with you the entire KRS Chapter 117 entirely deals with everything that the County Board of Election does as well as the State Board of Election does. And I also had in your packet the KRS that deals specifically with the County Board of Election and what our duties are, just to clarify that we don't meet or we don't get paid just to meet. We do have several duties, and um, I'd just like to educate the fiscal court a little bit. And I really am troubled by your comment about, I don't mean it to be negative, but the County Board of Elections isn't very transparent. 
you're the chair of the health department board of directors, aren't you? Are there minutes online anywhere? Uh, I think they are. No, I don't think they are. And do you have any written minutes? Yeah. Well, are they available? Uh, but, you know, first of all, uh, 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 I, uh, or, or Clark, uh, mm -hmm. I uh, certainly didn't mean to offend you by making that comment. My comment was in regard to being able to obtain information outside of an open record request or coming to a meeting. For example, our meetings are all, uh, we're being broadcast live on Facebook right now, uh, and the meetings, the videos of the meetings are available on YouTube afterwards. Uh, we, uh, uh, so we do, the, I don't know that you, your Board of Elections, first of all, what I was referring to is being able to get online like most, most people do to find information. So I couldn't, and again, I said that maybe I'm looking in the wrong place, but is there a website that the Board of Elections has if somebody wants to know, first of all, I mean, just basic things, who's on the Board of Elections? It seemed like there'd be a, you know, a website. The State that, Board of Elections has that information. Okay, so you'd have to go to the State Board of Elections website. What about your meeting dates and times? They're advertising the Spencer Magnet, okay. they're the fourth Wednesday. So there, every again, month. there's not, it's not, you can't go to a website and find all this information very easily. Um, I don't have the resources the, uh, to do the, that. The, the minutes, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that you have those in your office. People can go in and ask for them, uh, but they're not available online. And I'll look into it now that you've mentioned the health department, I'll be happy to look into that and get those meeting minutes of our local health uh, department uh, need to be put online. I'll make sure that that happens. Uh, that's, that's not a problem. So uh, I didn't mean to offend you. I wasn't trying to offend you. Uh, you're smiling as if you don't believe that, but I'll, I'll tell you sincerely, I did not mean to offend you. It was just the fact that you know, right now, I think there's probably a number of people who would like to know were there any candidates that filed for office today. It's I, advertised every week in the Spencer Man. In the Spencer once a week. And, but again, it's, you have to go to the, the uh, Registry of Election Finance to find out the current information. You know where to find them. I do. I, yeah, I, I, I'm fairly Amazing. resourceful. But, uh, so I wasn't trying to offend you. Um, and, uh, okay. okay. Thank uh, you. So, all right. Any, uh, anything else? Uh, if not, uh, we will move on. Jailer quarterly report is in your packet. I don't see the jailer here. So if you have any questions of him on his report, please give him a call. Uh, friends of the Spencer County Animal Shelter, we have asked to address the court. I thought maybe this was the appropriate place to do that. Hi, I'm Jill Steyer, as you probably already know, I'm the Vice President of the Trends. Uh, my president and I came and spoke with you guys uh, a month or so ago, um, about five acres up at the county farm. And I just wondered if you, what your thoughts were on that. Um, Lynette spoke with Ken, and there's you know no legal reason why you can't donate or sell to us. And I just wanted to see what your all's thoughts so were. about us, uh, the fiscal court donating land to mm -hmm. Or selling it to us. Um, um, I don't know that there's anything that would... Uh, uh, have you researched the restrictions? Any, are there any deed restrictions on that land up there? It's a county farm, been a county farm for years. That, that, may, that I did not research. I did research if the county could donate land to the animal folks and, the, and they said that they could as long as the purpose benefited the entire county which it would you know, mm -hmm. taking care of our dogs all over the county so that's just on that now i have i can pull the deeds on the old county farm and see if there's some sort of deed restriction that would prevent us from having dogs on the property but you know i'll look into it you know, uh, just this is just the way I feel about it. You've got the land behind the dollar store mm -hmm. or the high school. To me, that would be the place to bring an animal shelter, not at the farm, because at the farm it's too far away from the, the population. Uh, behind the dollar store is convenient, and that's what I was for. 
Well, can I ask you this, Jim? You were one that first said that your grandchildren play ball over there and you thought it would be a big distraction. And so say we build a building and then the schools start complaining because the dogs are barking while they're trying to teach the kids. Mm -hmm. And then we've spent all this money on a beautiful building and we've got a big problem. Well, I think with the proper buff, uh, buffery, with the uh, pine trees or evergreen trees between the high school baseball field, and that would, would take care of that. I did say that, but I didn't think that was the best spot. But after gathering all the information, I think at the, at the county road bar, it's just the, the county farm is just too far away for a lot of citizens to to, to go there. It's be more eight minutes. Eight minutes from McDonald's. Yeah, well, regardless, but that's where I stand. Okay. Yeah, there's other issues uh, like uh, sewer. I think if you did something up at the county farm, you'd have to build a lagoon. So most people are not really wild about lagoons, but. Um, versus uh, access to city sewers here. Mm -hmm. I, I, as far as the distraction from the, to the schools, I, I think that could be designed to be a very well-designed facility. I, don't, I mean, we're not even close to, to, to doing this, but, but it could be right. designed very well where uh, the, the outside runs could be on the back side of that. And, well, and John, we are, though. We're that close. Yeah. And, you know, really, if if you all donated the land or sold it to us for a small price, it would kind of be our responsibility on what we put into it and where we would want to build it. We're really, you know, thank you very much yeah. for the Dollar General site, but that's just not what we're interested in. We were interested in the county farm. So I guess we need a yes or a no there. Well, I don't think you're going to get a yes or a no tonight. I think there's no, no. I mean, okay. it's a process. Uh, I've learned what, in 15 years of being here, there's no quick answer here. <laughs> so, but I just want to keep this conversation going because we're ready. What is your problem with the, the land behind the dollar store? The school. We don't want to maybe not have a problem. I mean, we want to be, we want our, our shelter to be a positive uh, for everybody. And some of the things that we plan on doing to support ourselves, it's just not feasible there. You know, uh, according to state statute, the county has to have a, some sort of animal shelter. Yes. Okay, so fiscal court and county is going to be involved in it. It's not going to be uh, just you guys on your own, uh, whether it's on county land or not. We still have to operate so many hours a week and a day and <coughs> each other, regardless of what you guys do. So we need to work together on it. I agree that I'm, I'm open to that. You know, I, I drew up plans for you for a new building, yes. and I hope you use those. And uh, I think it's very adequate. Uh, and back there, again, as more information came into me, I think that's a better spot than it is at the farm because and, and I appreciate that. I do. But we have an opinion here too. It's our money as well. And you know, I just I feel like that, you know, everybody's trying to tell us what we need to do and we're very educated women. And we have our own ideas too. Yeah. And those are gonna have to be looked at as well if we're gonna partner. Yeah, and you know, we're, we're going to have to compromise on this. I agree, I mean, both. We, you know, you can tell us, we can tell you, but I think we need to sit down like we did at the beginning of this two yeah. years ago. And we met at the library two or three times and we discussed it. I think we need to get back to that because we've gotten away from that. And yeah. of course, you know, I'd be willing to do it again. Well, there's a, and there's something I've learned here also, Jim, it's going to take more than you because all of you all are seated here, and <laughs> it's hard to get a yes or a no on anything around here. I mean, you guys know that. And we can meet the Doomsday. Um, well, then what was your suggestion? My suggestion is uh, sell us the land and let us build our shelter. We'll welcome the county dogs in um, and go from there. You know, we'll section things off, we'll have ours, you'll have yours, and as long as we don't get a, a bad director in there, we're more than willing to share. We can do that at the, uh, at the behind the dollar store, too. 
this is true, but that's amazing that there won't be any problems. And, you know, we want to build and stay somewhere and establish ourselves. And, and like I said, some of the things that we plan on doing to support ourselves, because you can have a building, but if the lights aren't on, there's no shelter. We have to be able to pay our bills, and we don't want to rely on anyone. And I just don't see that spot being right for the things we planned on doing. Well, there's plenty of room for disagreement. One of the things that is attractive about the, the find the dollar store, and you, you'll remember this when there was a, uh, you all did an event for uh, high schoolers to come to the shelter, or uh, I think you met at the high school. And I, I just remember, I believe it was Melvin, was one of you that said you know, we, we were expecting like 10 or 12 people, and it was like 30 or 40 people, right. kids, and so, you know, it was like, hmm, that's another, uh, maybe a positive for being there is it make it a lot easier and, and convenient for high schoolers to come over and help in the shelter. Uh, yeah. But uh, that, there's, that, there's going to be plenty of room. A bit, I, I, I think we can probably both of us agree this is not going to happen during this administration no. until the end of the year. So there's plenty of uh, opportunities and room to explore opportunities and options and so forth. This is not going to be an easy uh, you know, solution, but uh, you know there's there's going to be pluses and minuses in you know, either location. Uh, you know, I, I'd like to see the city for start uh, I would participating. It makes I it a little say. easier when it's right here in the city than uh, if it's up on the county farm. So. Uh, just all kinds of things and mm -hmm. uh, you know my, my immediate concern for the shelter is the staffing of that shelter i agree and that was mm -hmm. my next question for you guys you know i've been a big part of that for seven years now volunteering there and for the past four i've moved all the dogs that i can move out of spencer county to bigger rescues that have a higher adoption rates um can i ask what your all's plans are past the 28th I mean, Randy says he's going to then the I, shelter. I, I'll tell you, I asked that question and I've got, not gotten an answer. Uh, and I guess it falls back on, the, on my shoulders to deal with the decision that was made at this table. Uh, as you know, I did not agree with it. I was a, a sole vote against uh, or, or for a, a keeping a darn good employee, which we had. Uh, Very as you know, Nick and Victoria couldn't have been a better working I know. team. <coughs> and, Let me tell and you. Michelle's back there shaking her head. Yep. <laughs> uh, you know, certainly there is no question that the Smith County Animal Shelter has had its share of uh, <coughs> controversy sure. and challenges and uh, stuff. And, and what a breath of fresh, fresh air to have people of that caliber and that quality to come in and operate that shelter. And it's unfortunate that we did not step up as a fiscal court to the plate. I agree. And, and to keep and retain those employees. So that decision's done. Uh, yep. Nick, I wish him all the best. I do uh, And uh, I think he's gonna have a terrific career down there in Nelson County. So, I do too. Uh, in the meantime, the only option, uh, just to answer your question, is that I, have at this point because we have been advertising uh, and uh, for a number of positions that now being one of them now another one that we're going to be advertising for and we're not getting the responses uh, of anybody of any caliber really to to, to fill those shoes uh, we're not going to you know when we're when we're not competitive in the marketplace in terms of pay rates uh, you know you're going to have to to live with what what you what you get so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, my plan is to, the, the only thing that I know to do is to have Randy come in, fill in uh, 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 what gap he can, uh, try to get him some help. I, you know, I'm, I'm really at wit's end. I think it's a really, really good decision. But we're going to live with it. We're going to move on. And the new court can, can wrestle with that as well. So. Well, here's my concern even with that. The last time Randy worked up at the shelter, um, I was there. I got up at 6 o'clock in the morning and came there and cleaned before I went to my regular job. 
and let me, let, me, let me just stop you right there because I'm not going to get into talking about a specific employee okay. and so forth. You and I can, can talk okay. about that until, until the cows come home, but uh, not in a public meeting. Okay, and sure. Like well, so. can I ask you this? Who's mm -hmm. going to do your training for your next uh, ACO and next director? Well, the, the immediate training is an online uh, training that uh, must be completed. Uh, right. Uh, but you know, there's all kinds of training opportunities that you know, just is going to depend on you know, who we get in there and what. You know, there's a minimum we have to keep that shelter open for yes, the course of, in the course of the week. You know, I think it's going to be running on just the bare, bare minimum. Uh, okay. You know, I've uh, asked one of the uh, workers over at the recycle center if he can help fill in. It's not neither one of them are, are interested at all in doing that. Uh, some people just are not good with, with dogs or animals. Well, and there are certain standards mm -hmm. that you have to follow just right. in, in planning. You know, this is not, this is not an easy no. position to fill. It's not just a, a, a line on a piece of paper no, that you plug not. somebody's name on and off you go. It is very, very challenging. Still, you know, uh, this community will, I think, suffer the consequences of that decision for some time. So, okay. Will yeah. the friends still have access to that budget? Sure. Okay. Yeah, no, you know, uh, okay. I, I think we're great partners, and uh, 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 we'll be a great partner with the new administration. Well, again, I have to tell all of you that was a huge mistake. What happened? You know, it really was the last three. You all know what happened. Lawsuits, dogs killed, and according to the court, animals stolen. And I just don't know what you all were thinking. Yeah. And I'm very disappointed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on. The sheriff and clerk area reports. This is on a calendar year basis. It's in the packets. We just want to examine on it just for your information. Uh, those go to both the county clerk and the sheriff on a monthly basis so they can keep track of where they're on the calendar here. Uh, we'll move on to new business. The CASA presentation and request has been delayed until next month. Uh, next up is EMS Chris Lim. We've got a couple of issues there. One is painting. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I skip something? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. See, that does happen from time to time. <laughs> okay. Uh, the old business is wages committee update, Brett Beaverson, Mike Moody. How could I forget that? We have in your packets uh, under the notes of what the committee has been doing. Um, also gather some comparative data that is also in the packets. Um, what was available with, from KECO. Um, there's uh, also looking at county submitted budget comparisons, uh, trying to see where Spencer County is. Now these are numbers that were self-reported, so um, their accuracy, I don't know, it's from FY 2018. And then the population is from 2017. Again, all that information from CAFO. Um, then we're looking at the tax rates from surrounding counties. You can see that uh, Spencer County in 2020 still has the lowest tax rate at 7.2. Um, Table four, uh, the county employee rate wage increase cost. Presented here is uh, what the cost would be for 2% up to 5% in half percent increments. Now, this is presented as information only. Um, to the court. Now, the wages committee was assigned by the judge executive, consisted of 
myself and Mike Moody. And on December 29th, in an email from John Riley, he states communication was made to Kipta's Danielle Story to see if ARPA funds can be used toward wage increases. In my opinion, this is an illogical means of funding wages for perpetuity. Wages must come from existing sources of revenue rather than federal government bureaucratic distributions so wage increases are sustainable. <coughs> the email was laced with an eagerness to increase certain wages for fear of losing employees to surrounding counties, yet consider the importance of all employees. The task of proposing wage increases came with no parameters, such as budget limits, and was tasked to two magistrates opposed to the use of ARPA funds. For three years within the current fiscal court, wage increase recommendations came from the judge executive with few exceptions. So why is there a change in the process this year? Is the judge seeking to distance himself from the process using a committee so if the result is less than he hoped, there is someone else to blame? Why was the wages committee update skipped at the January 3rd fiscal court meeting. And employees in any organization are typically essential and county government is no exception. The current market with surrounding counties makes recruiting and keeping employees more difficult. For the most part, we are not a wasteful county when it comes to spending tax dollars. This is the benefit of living in a small community and until citizens are knocking down our doors to raise their taxes to increase services, I'm opposed to tax increases. Therefore, operating within the county's current means is a necessity. It will be the responsibility of the judge executive's office to return a budget to fiscal court with proposed cost of wages, including benefits. The fiscal court for final approval. The preliminary cost analysis is listed in the packet. On top of that, I am going to make a motion to prohibit the use of ARPA funds for wage increases. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think that's, um, well, go ahead, that's, um, whatever you're going to do. Any discussion? Call the roll. Scott Peterson? Yes. Judge Riley? No. Squire Travis? No. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? No. <clears throat> Squire Mike Moody? Yes. I vote motion favor. Okay. Anything? I do have a question uh, on the uh, to Brett. Uh, it, it says requested jailer corner or magistrate paper surrounding counties uh, and received response from Shelby, Washington, Ohio counties. I did not get anything on that. And there won't be until after the filing date has ended. All right, that's answered my question. That's I should have said that. Um, no, I, I can address some of what you're, um, you said there, Scott Beaverson, and that yes, indeed, I have proposed pay rate increases. The last one I proposed was essentially uh, what I term watered up and thrown in the garbage can, and the motion was to give all the county employees a 3% increase across the board. That was the extent of it. So uh, rather than go through that exercise, I thought I would go ahead and put this, uh, have you all look into it uh, uh, and make a proposal rather than me. If you want me to make the proposal, I'll make a proposal, but it's going to be based on market rates. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, we've seen a good example of what happens when you don't keep uh, at least competitive with the market. And we've lost two excellent employees, and I just hope that we can have some employees for whoever takes the helm of this uh, in January of next year. Hope we have, have employees left 
uh, we don't do something to keep our county employees. We acted as a court at our last meeting. We gave significant increases to both the offices and their uh, deputy salary cap uh, that we established. That was uh, an additional $200,000 over the, the previous year. We also know that we have a, a, about $148,000, $150,000 less revenue uh, based on approval of the clerk's budget. So that's a, a difference of $350,000 right there without even touching any of the county employees. I don't know how you're going to be able to get me on I'm going to do what you all uh, play the, the, the cards that you all deal in in order to operate this county. Uh, uh, it, if I'm, I'm glad your motion did not pass on the use of ARPA money, but however, I do agree wholeheartedly that ARPA money should be used for one-time uh, purchases or equipment upgrades, that sort of thing, not for year-over-year -year payroll. What my question to Danielle is that I'm going to be charged with presenting you all a balanced budget. Am I going to be able to fill that gap, even if it's temporary, because something, we're going to discuss it later on in the meeting, you know, I already know where that's going to go, so, you know, some, the new court is going to have to wrestle with this. It came up, uh, actually, at the start of, of this court, uh, and my concerns over the budget. We, we had our uh, uh, bacon saved by the COVID relief funds. We were able to replace a lot of sheriff's vehicles with that. Without that, we wouldn't have been able to do it. You'd have not had to have gone into debt to do that. So, um, so yes, I mean, you know, I, if, if you're asking me to make a proposal for employee pay rates, I'll do that, uh, and I can do that at the next meeting. But I have a feeling where it's going to go, and it's only going to add to the difficulty of presenting a balanced budget. So. Um, with that. Chairman, like to say that. Yes, go ahead. Well, I concur with what Squire Beaverson said about being able to sustain, uh, you, you cannot use our money, but I, I do not want to tie our hands with a decision based upon, you know, the current information that we're giving right now. I, I don't want to do that. We may have to consider it at some point in time, but I am, I, I do not uh, see how you can sustain a given, given money it's a one-time gift, and, and using that for something well, we have to use every month, every it, year. It could be, it could be used temporarily. Temporarily, yeah. You know, because we've got the best balance budget. That. That's what I'm no, saying. No, you can't. You can't. I agree. You know, you're going to have to have a steady. But I don't want to tie our hands. Steady, steady revenue source in order to be able to to keep up. So, um, all right. Any other comments, questions? If not. We're going to move on. And please never ever hesitate, just like Dan, if I happen to skip over something, uh, and um, just like all of us, so, so you can make a mistake periodically, and uh, that's not a problem. Never have been. So I'm sorry if you were offended that I skipped over that at the last meeting, and, uh, and uh, I apologize to you for that. Okay? Almost didn't make it today. Down the bottom of the page, I have uh, We've already dealt with the CASA EMS. Chris, you've got several items there we need to address. Mm -hmm. yes, I'll speed things along. The first one is painting of the EMS offices. We've got two quotes one for, from Country Boy, one from Ronnie Hong. Uh, there's a difference uh, of about. Well, five hundred dollars. Uh, I know uh, the director Chris would like to to have Ronnie Hong familiar more with uh, Ronnie That's and more comfortable in, in having him do that work over there. But it's going to be up to the court to decide who we're going to have paint the EMS office. Yeah, that, so. that quote is for the uh, classroom side and dorm room side only. It's not for the office side, so it's just for half the room. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, have running on paint the EMS office. I'll second that so we can have a motion discussion. and a second. Discussion? 
right. I think we're going down a really slippery road here. Uh, a couple of meetings ago, I had gotten quotes for a gate, uh, a six foot chain link gate at the recycling center. And I had two quotes. And I was told by Mr. Brewer, we need to have three quotes. That's what we've normally done. So I go back, we'll get a third quote. Now, in there, we've got two quotes. And and you had recommended that we go with Ronnie Hahn, the local guy here in the county. And Country Boy has done work for us before, satisfactory. They were $525 cheaper, that's 17% of the quotes. I would like to see the heads of these departments not recommend any one person on these quotes. But provide the quotes to the physical court and let us vote on them. Uh, uh, we did that. the same thing a little bit later on in the road department on the tires, exact same thing. And I, I think we need to get back to somewhat uh, what we started with when we when we all came on board is we either get three quotes and we get two quotes. Two quotes is fine with me because it is getting much more difficult to get people from out of the county to come into Spencer County and to give us quotes. And then when we look at this and, and Country Boy is $525 cheaper, but yet we go with the local boy because we want to do local business, and I agree with you 100%. We need to do that. But what message does that send to these companies outside the county that come in to the county? They're finally going to say, well, they gave it to their boy anyway, so we're not going to come even give you quotes. So it's going to be even harder for us to get quotes from people out of the county. So I'd like to see us go back either to two quotes, because three is it's pushing limit. It's hard to get three on anything. But uh, anyway, would you like for me to withdraw my motion? No, that's the motion is what it is. We can okay. it. If I can speak on to and uh, we can, we're able to paint it, paint it. Uh, Randy Bush, the building maintenance supervisor, is the one who's in charge of, uh, of getting quotes when it comes to building maintenance. I make a request to Randy that we get some quotes to paint part of the building. That we've been in that building since 2000 and late 2011, early 2012. Uh, and Mike, Mike may remember he was on the court we went in there. It's the same contractor grade paint that was put on that building when it was, when it was remodeled for EMS to move in. It's, it's time to put some paint on it uh, just to make it look presentable. So whoever paints it, paints it. But, uh, Ronnie's local, uh, when they showed me the quotes, uh, kind of what you just said, Keep our business local if we can. We can start trying to do that with some of the repairs on our ambulances and everything else. So. Okay, I'm going to withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw my second. Okay, it opens it up for a new motion. Would anybody like to make a motion? We need to go on. Can we talk about it a little bit before? Well, sure, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Chris, I, I know we disagree with you, but it needs pain. That's not the issue here. Yes, let's do it. But let's, let's, let's get it because back online to where this court needs to be, and that is. We don't. We can. We can take the, the the lowest bid and not approve it. But when we send a message to these people out of the county that come in here and bid, that we're going to give it to the local boys regardless if they're if they're cheaper or higher, then we're sending a wrong message. And I think for this court, we need to get back to what we need to do legally and responsibly with the taxpayer's money. So we're going to take $525 of the taxpayer's money and just give it to Ronnie Hahn because he's a local boy? I'm open for a motion. I'm going to say something on that. Yeah, go ahead. You gave work for you bad enough me in court to say I bullied him. I did not bully him on a car truck. We had bids and y'all took a bid that you didn't know what you were bidding on, you bid the wrong amount on, and rushed it through. And y'all cost the county and the rest of corporate voted for it, $50,000. We're getting nowhere fast on painting your offices, so uh, <laughs> I'll make the motion that we have with one set the standards, and then you want to change the standards again. I'll make the motion that we go with the country boy. Mm -hmm. We've got a motion coming here. We'll go with the country boy for uh, whatever their 
We have a motion. Is nobody going to second the motion? Okay. I'll second the motion. There you go. Doesn't need to be any more discussion. Call the roll, please. Todd Bradley? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? I'll pass. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Beaverson? No. Motion passes. We will get country board to paint your uh, office. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Uh, <laughs> second, second up on this. I <laughs> just uh, an equipment request. We, uh, I applied for a grant with KCO back several months ago. We sent out a uh, grant to help uh, reduce workplace injury and a safety grant. You got a motion to approve the purchase of the elk lifter safety equipment. Second. We've got a motion and a second. I'm sorry, you made a motion? That he was yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. They got interrupted on. <laughs> so we applied for, for the, uh, it's called an elk lifter. It's an airbag device which is used to, uh, when someone falls or needs a lift assist, you load them onto it, you inflate it, mm -hmm. and it uh, brings them to a seated position so our employees don't have them to dead lift people off the floor in an effort to reduce back injuries. So they're about a $1,600 a piece, I believe, and this grant will cover all but twelve hundred dollars for a total of four of them. Any other questions? Can these fit in the ambulances? Yeah, yes, yeah, so there it's, it's got a small pump, maybe like the size of a lunchbox, and then the uh, device itself is uh, an airbag of a uh, like strong vinyl type stuff. So it folds down so it just stick a compartment on each ambulance. It's a commitment of twelve hundred dollars on the day. I do have a question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got one quote. Is there any other companies that sell these products? Uh, this is coming from our vendors. I've shopped our vendors since two thousand and four and five and so it's just one of our typical vendors. I mean is there anybody else that sells this equipment? I'm sure all my vendors sell the same equipment I think. I mean, this is the, this is who had the best price for us on that. But again, we have one quote. And you get back to the two quote or three quote. You, get, you see what I mean? I, I don't. I, I, I I'm going gonna, gonna to ask every time I order ambulance supplies, do I need to get three quotes to order the supplies? Well, we're spending $6,000. Yeah. We're, we're, it's $1,200 on the grant money. It's a $6,000 purchase. It is $6,000 if tax deductible. Yeah. 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 It is $6,000 of taxpayer money, regardless of where it is. Where it comes from. Yeah. It is. And, that, and when I put in the grant, that's the information that was submitted to KCO and they approved that grant. So. But again, I think we need to get back to where we're not just getting one or two quotes on a major purchase. That's my, that's my issue here. Not whether we need it or not. Yes, we need it. I'd like to see you have it. I'm going to vote for it. Well, with that, call the roll, please. May I ask who made the motion in the second, please? Uh, I made the motion, Jim, second. Thank you. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Peterson? Yes. And Joe Friday? Yes. There, there is a quote from Zoll to repair a heart monitor that had some, uh, that malfunction had some, uh, uh, the heart monitors communicate with, with Wi-Fi so we can transmit uh, EKGs and data to the hospitals and receiving facilities. That way they didn't know if they need to activate a cath lab, stuff like that. The part that transmits in the monitors, our oldest heart monitor, that part has just gone bad. So that is the quote from Zola, the manufacturer of the monitor, to fix that product. These so are roughly $50,000 monitors. Yeah, to each. replace it, yes. Yeah, Ten, ten times more the cost to replace it than just to fix it. Motion to approve the We've got a motion. 35. Second. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Peterson? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? 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 Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. For Mike Moody? Yes. For Beaverson? Yes. For Charlie? Yes. For Travis? Yes. Uh, the last thing I have, 
Uh, we have ordered 50 rapid COVID tests for uh, county employees. With uh, We've had some trouble. Uh, I got with Julie Susie last week and the week before. Had some trouble getting in for a COVID test. Um, and she would, she'd been exposed to maybe, I think she's symptomatic too. So we have ordered uh, 50 rapid COVID tests, which will be safe for just the county employees that come to EMS. We can uh, give them the tests in the parking lot, just like the, the testing service. And, uh, we have them to reach out $15 a piece for rapid tests, so we ordered 50 of those. So. Yeah, we don't need to take any action on that or encourage them to go ahead and get that. We will be able to test our, well, this will be for employee testing. Employee only, correct. Yeah, so uh, that would make it a little more convenient, at least for the rapid test. Uh, next up is road department. Uh, we've got a request for the purchase of some tires. Um, Jerry, you want to take this over since... Uh, not really. Not really? Well, <laughs> I think if, if, if you talk to uh, Todd, I mean, you might make a motion on the Monroe. I believe that's who uh, Todd was recommending. Uh, two bids on the yeah. other time. Is there a reason you didn't get three on that? Do I? Is there a reason? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Makes no difference to me whatsoever. <laughs> uh, we got a bid from uh, Monroe Tire, which is here, and uh, well, they're in downtown, really. Mm -hmm. I've been here for years. And we got one from Willisburg. Willisburg is about hundred dollars cheaper than Monroe Tire. Uh, I recommend to go with Monroe uh, because it'll cost us more than hundred dollars to drive each vehicle over to Willisburg and then get it back. You know, and we get good over, service. We get over backwards to help the road department. Yeah. Okay. And is that a motion? That's the motion. We've got a motion Second. to purchase uh, tires uh, uh, yeah. for the road to two hundred and thirty dollars from the road. Yeah. Uh, Second. And that's a uh, motion by Jerry. And second by Starbrook. Okay. Just to make it clear, you know, again, we've got two quotes for these tires. And we were going with the local boy who is cheaper. But I believe what Jerry said, by the time we drive what, three vehicles to Willsburg one at a time and pay somebody to do it, it's to go with the local person. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any more opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. And Jerry, you're up next to explain the uh, your uh, favorite international truck. Uh, I don't know what your uh, love of that truck. And, uh, we're going to have that bronze for you uh, at some point in time in the future. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to remind the court that I recommend getting rid of these things two years ago. We've done nothing but put money in it. We got an okay from the court to spend up to $15,000. Uh, and this one has got 20000 miles on it. Uh, and the... Uh, Bill come up 15, 2 or 15, 3, and I told Todd I didn't okay that. The court told me 15,000, and so he called them back and they cut the price on it and got it below it. And we went to pick the truck up and you couldn't steer it. First time we went to pick the truck up, the radiator went out. The second time we, we got that and that got it up so high. Now this last time, they went to pick it up and they couldn't steer it. Uh, they estimated it to be at the very high. Now this is a very high uh, estimate. So keep that in your mind. The worst it could be would be another $6,447.19. If it's just a steering box, it would just be a thousand. So we need to do court permissions to okay up to 644719. Your motion to approve a, up to an additional sixty five hundred dollars for repairs on the international. Hopefully it's not near that, but uh, that's the worst case scenario. So I'll move. We've got a motion. A second. And a second by Swartis. Question? Yes, go ahead. 
on page 93 at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, if you notice right there in the middle of the page, it says uh, diagnose power steering issue. It costs $300 for them to diagnose it. Okay? Uh, the $6,447, the way I see it, is that they didn't diagnose it, but they said this is what it's going to cost to replace everything on, on the power steering. Right, everything is wrong. Right. Then, over on page 95, it says uh, diagnosed power steering issue, which evidently they diagnosed it. And at the end, of, it says page one of one, but it doesn't give a total price on what the diagnose price would be. But I added all these up, and it came to $3,130 if to fix it the way they diagnosed to fix it instead of replacing everything. So are we are we voting on the 64.47 or 31.30 of what they say it's going to cost according to their diagnosis? We're voting on 6500 dollars okay. and whatever the bill is, is what it is. Okay. Yeah. 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 It could be a thousand. It could be sixty five. Nowhere else. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just I got a problem with them saying that if they diagnose it, and this is their telephone numbers up there. You know, if if they diagnose it, 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 it'll be a, it, it'll be this. If they don't diagnose it, it's going to be that. So if they don't diagnose it, it's 64. If they did diagnose it, which they did, the motion one. is for 65 up to uh, maximum 6,500 dollars. Gotcha. Now, I, also don't see, I don't see any labor on that. It's probably the reason why it's like less than that, too. So the labor is on, where's that? 2700 No, no, on page 95. This <coughs> Okay. Well, dear, just a real quick question. It's my understanding, talking to Todd, this is not the truck that we talked about getting rid of last year no that's the one that's still running that's okay <laughs> maybe this, yeah this, 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 this is a totally different, different truck yeah that's what i thought okay they, they thought that two years ago a year yeah. ago i'm going to tell you all again they need to go here at service uh, then also we got one of the new forwards there yeah well um, <laughs> as you know we've got more bad weather coming in. I don't know if we're going to get this back in time. I doubt it. But uh, if you remember, uh, I think it was Swar Beaverson that, you know, because I was concerned, the road department was concerned, you know, having a short on equipment and we were expecting some bad weather. And I think, I believe it was Swar Beaverson reminded me just because we surplus something doesn't mean we can't use it. And I told Todd, if it's there, use it. You need it, you use it. So I'm not going to be a truck sit there or a bad truck sit there that works. Uh, when we've got a job to do. So, okay, we've got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any more opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes. And we're going to move on. Uh, I, know, I don't know why this was duplicated in the packets, but uh, uh, it was. Maybe I was just trying to get my point across twice, but um, you, you obviously read the agenda cover sheet. Uh, and the summary, and uh, you know, we did approve. Uh, um, uh, went from 700 to 850 on the sheriff's salary cap. Is 150 thousand additional. We've got another 50 thousand additional in the clerk uh, salary cap. 148 thousand reduction in anticipated excess fees. That's a 350 thousand dollar gap. Um, it's not sustainable. It's, uh, we we haven't even talked about our county. Employees, which we, you know, if we don't start taking care of our county employees and keeping them up with the market, we're going to lose more. Um, and uh, there's a, a couple of things that we can do. Uh, one, which I, I feel certain that uh, this court is not going to do, a, a future court, perhaps the next court, is going to have to wrestle with this. We've got to have sustainable revenues. Um, and uh, so we've got, uh, you know, we've got uh, options. We can uh, do something with our insurance premium tax. The only reason I've got this on here is because, and I think the information is in the packet, is we have deadlines. Uh, if we are going, we can't wait until 
uh, the end of March or, or the first part of, of May and say, oops, well, maybe what we ought to do is to look at insurance premium tax. It's too late to do that then. Uh, it has to be done by March 23rd, and that's an ordinance, so you've got some time to get that passed and, and implement it. Uh, I don't, uh, uh, for a minute, think that this court is going to do that. Uh, my suggestion, if you do, would be to eliminate. We have never dealt with the uh, AT&T uh, uh, 911 surcharge on AT&T landline phones. That revenue is down now to about 60,000. Uh, it will continue to drop. Uh, when I retire from this court, I can tell you I will be probably dropping my landline phones and you'll be losing another dollar 84 a month. Uh, and uh, so my recommendation is to eliminate that altogether if you uh, do uh, uh, consider the insurance premium tax. and. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it other than to tell you I will present a balanced budget to this court if need be to temporarily fill a gap with ARPA funds uh, as opposed to making some pretty significant cuts in county government. Uh, I will use uh, that as a stop gap measure to, to uh, get uh, to the end of the term. Um, actually, this would be for the next fiscal year, but um, it's, it's going to be difficult. Uh, and uh, somehow or another, we will uh, do it. But, you know, there, it's inevitable. I can tell you it is inevitable. But at some point, you're either going to have to uh, make a whole lot of residents pretty darn mad about uh, providing county services, or you're going to need to step up and uh, provide the revenue that we need in order to provide those services and uh, so anyway I don't know if we need to you know if anybody wants to weigh in on it probably not but uh, I just want to lay that out there uh, if that's not an option I'm not not going to have any other um, choice but to use and fill the budget gaps with ARPA money, even if that's the borrowed mm -hmm. ARPA money or what have you. Um, so, anyway. Do we anticipate um, having uh, a significant increase in revenue because of the valuation of used vehicles? Uh, I hope not. I hope that was sent out to county clerks. Yeah, I, th I hope not. I, I think uh, the legislature is maybe wrestling with that. I don't know what the outcome that's going to be, but. Uh, from what I understand, it's significant, like 40 to 40 percent of the uh, increase in the value of used vehicles. Uh, you know, it's going to, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're living in some uh, very interesting times now where uh, you know, uh, you're going to see all kinds of things uh, as the purchasing power of your dollar continues to plummet, and you will see the cost of things go up. So. That includes the county government. So, anything else? I'll look forward to your guidance on that. And when absent of that, I will definitely be coming up with a balanced budget. So, um, next up is the um, ABC contract. Um, I think uh, that needed some work. I believe that has been completed now. Is that correct? Yeah. So all we need is a motion to approve this uh, uh, contract with the city for the ABC administrator. Motion to approve. We got a motion. Moody. Second. And Jim Travis, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any of you want to oppose? Hearing none, motion passes. Next up is the um, resolution for uh, the hazard mitigation um, program. Is it HMP? It's, 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 it's all right. Hazard mitigation. Uh, we, we have to pass this resolution in order to be able to qualify for. Uh, hazard mitigation monies. The, the plan has not been completed yet by KIPTA. The hazard mitigation plan, KIPTA does it for uh, 
all of the counties in the KIPP area minus Jefferson County. They're on their own plan. So it's a regional plan that, uh, for my part of the job, it deals with like disaster, tornadoes, uh, floods, stuff like that. It, it's more encompassing. We vote tomorrow at our committee to approve the final plan. What KIPTA needs is uh, the resolution of Spencer County send out, they adopt the plan. Uh, this makes us eligible for uh, FEMA funds and federal funds. Without this, we lose eligibility for the FEMA funds. I did check with uh, Danielle and Hayden, I believe it was, that uh, even though the hazard mitigation plan has not been approved, that we can still pass this resolution in advance of them doing that. So uh, this is just one thing that uh, out of the way. Motion to approve. We've got a motion. Second. Papers. Second by the question. Okay, go ahead. So we're going to go to uh, adopt the resolution that's not complete. No, the plan, the, the hazard mitigation plan is not complete. The resolution is complete. All right, so we're, 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 we're a, so we're going to vote to accept the plan that's not complete. No, we're, we're going to, we're going to. The, uh, the plan is actually complete. We're voting tomorrow to find, at the KIPTA meeting to finalize it. Uh, what happened was, I guess, I guess uh, there was some change up at KIPTA and the vote on that got delayed. So the old plan is now expired. Uh, it's just, it's, uh, so what's the difference between the old plan and the new plan? It just revises some things, like for Spencer County, uh, we added some stuff that we want to focus on down the road, like uh, maybe the old heady washover bridge. We've got to identify some certain things specifically in the plan so that, uh, especially when mitigations and post-disaster funds become available, if we want to apply toward that to uh, make some, uh, if we have some, some areas that we know are prone to flooding or prone to, uh, I guess like road slides and stuff that we can that we can apply for mitigation grants and post disaster grants toward that stuff even if it's not affected in the actual disaster. Uh, so KIPTA puts the plan together on a regional basis because all the counties outside of Jefferson County in in our area just don't have the resources. And I believe the rest of the ag districts do it for for their areas. Uh, so it's it's an all-encompassing plan, almost like an all-hazards plan, which which focuses on uh, a lot of natural disaster stuff, some roadway stuff, some power stuff. So is anybody here seen the plan? I, I have, and like I said, we've had we made some minor changes of the Spencer County stuff, but it, where it does it identify us like say all the dams in our area, and how big is the stuff? It's pretty sizable. Yeah. You can find it on Kip's Yeah, website. the old one is on the Old's website and it's been updated. I mean, it's, it's a sizable. You can just bring us back out on what the additional things are. I would get that from Kip to. Kip would give us that. But, uh, but with, without passing the resolution, we just become uneligible for uh, for any future FEMA funds until until we adopt the resolution. Has yeah. funds. Yeah, and one of the things that as it relates to your district, Mike, is we have tried several times to get hazard mitigation money to raise the level of the Shears Creek Road. Every time it rains hard, that road closed. We've never been approved for that, but we'll continue to ask for it. Uh, we're asking for funds to replace the bridge there on Old Heavy Road, which is a constant problem in uh, the heavy rain. Um, so how long has this been expired? It just, it, it just went out. The, the, pre, the plan is done every five years, I believe, and so it, so they do uh, every five years. So we started, uh, the, and the counties meet with KIPTA several occasions, and we went, uh, of course, COVID slowed a lot of that down, but we started the process well over a year ago. So how long has it been expired, actually? Uh, it, just, it just expired uh, what is, within, the, within the first year. It's been delayed because of uh, KIPTA not getting the funding from FEMA to yeah. complete the process. So I think a year and a half. So, mm -hmm. but, uh, so this is basically a resolution. Uh, so yeah. well, we're not going to be able to change anything yeah. now. The plan itself. I mean, it's already set. No, so, because uh, like we had our input, and we we had them add some certain things. <coughs> that we sent out the surveys. Then they, they posted for a public input. I don't know how much public input they got. Kip just came here and talked about it as part of the in, in, in the court was part of the in-kind match in 
in the grant they get from FEMA to do this, from the federal government to do this. So uh, they've had they've had a period of public input. So anything that the public has requested to be put into it has been studied and been added to the plan to fit in the plan. Uh, so they do a thorough job on it. Uh, much better than any one county could do on their own to make just a generalized plan for Spencer County. So it's, it's an all hazards plan. It, it, it covers uh, almost any event that we could we could think of, uh, down to to a small dam failure to a large dam breach. It talks about uh, sinkholes and earthquakes, and they they have the capability to, to do a lot more study and survey on that than we would have at the county level. So. Uh, it's a complete plan. It's, it's it's always been a good plan. We we adopted it every time that that it's, it's expired since as long as Kip has been doing it. It's got just common practice because it's an awesome task. Up there. It, it is. Plan. It's a man. It's just many many practice. hours. Uh, if you uh, were to come to any of the 911 uh, and uh, um, uh, LEDC meetings, you know Kip does here because they log those hours of, uh, and those attendance records of, you know, for input into developing this plan. So it's seven, is it seven counties that we uh, And there's, uh, let, let, uh, there's a two, yeah. two, two or three in Southern Indiana and then uh, the greater Louisville area in yeah. Kentucky. So we've got a motion by Squire Beaverson, <clears throat> second by Squire Travis to approve the adoption of this resolution. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Jeff Riley? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? No. Squire Beaverson? Yes. Okay, motion passes, and we will get that to Kipta. Next up, um, we've got uh, uh, a recommended new hire for public works, uh, and this is with some. I have to say this in reluctancy, but uh, um, I uh, am recommending uh, hiring a Russell Davis. Uh, the, only, the only thing I guess I can do is offer the current pay rate is 13 bucks an hour. Uh, and uh, uh, that would be subject to uh, background and drug screening. I'm assuming that the thirteen dollars an hour has already been discussed with him. Oh yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. What's this gentleman's uh, position on there? Uh, just a worker. He's, uh, as you know, we go uh, down significantly the number of employees, and that that's <coughs> down basically to uh, Brian and part-time already. So it's uh, a part. part. Yeah. Well, I call it public works. Yeah, it's more of a description of what they do. So, yeah. And nobody seen the background check or anything on this guy so far? No, uh, not yet. Yeah. Okay. No, but oh, the, the motion, uh, pardon me. My motion would be subject to the background check and approval by Squire Moody, Mike Moody. Well, the well, background check. Order so, that, cause I think that well, okay, Squire Moody and Squire uh, uh, Brewer. The two of you all. Sorry. I just don't want to wait until the next meeting to put him on. I don't want to be able to send you the background check and you'll get him in the and move on. So, um, so the motion is to hire Russell Davis at a pay rate of $13 an hour, subject to background check and approval by Squire Moody and Squire Brewer and a drug screen. And Squire Beaverson, I believe, seconded that motion. Is that good? Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. And uh, next up is your quarterly reports are in your packet, of course, anytime, and your monthly financial statements are in there as well. And anytime you have any questions about any of that, I believe you know who to call. And uh, uh, next up would be Invoice bills and transfers. Oh, 
let me back up. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you all paused. And, uh, there was a long pause. We, I have, we just did something. Uh, that's right. Okay. Uh, 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 I have to do this. I have another hire. I mentioned this earlier that I had uh, I wanted to discuss this uh, when we uh, talked about James Evans at the road department. We lost a worker up there uh, requesting that we rehire Brad Bradley Moore. He has worked at the road department before. He has asked to come back, and he is already trained. That would be at a pay rate of $14 an hour, and that would be subject to background check and uh, drug screen. Uh, drug screen's already been done. I don't know if we've done a background check. We will do that, and that would be subject to Squire Brewer and Squire uh, Moody's approval on the background check. So uh, I did, I'll tell you this, even if we just pay him as a contract laborer, uh, with the bad weather that we had the last uh, couple of days, uh, uh, and knowing that the road department was short, I uh, gave uh, the road foreman permission to go ahead and call Bradley in. He's already trained, and, and which he did, and he was thankful he could use Bradley. So he has already been working on my okay. But uh, this is only a formal motion to retire. So motion to approve. We've got a motion. Second. To, uh, motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Now we get to quarter report, monthly financial statement, and invoices, bills, and taxes. Motion to approve. Paying the bills. Good. Any invoices necessary? All right. Good. Second answer. Second. Mr. Travis. Second. We have one comment on page 147. 147. I noticed that we had almost a $15,000 uh, animal control bill from the Gulf Creek Animal Control Hospital. I called uh, Nick this morning and he said, and I figured this what it was, that Bell Creek had invoiced the county for several months. He's backed up so they do one dog at a time. Instead of sending an invoice out one at a time, they accumulate them and that's what that $15,000 is. It's also got to stay in new ground. Yeah. Yeah. It was a culmination of like, several months. Not just one or two months. All right. For the motion and second, you have questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'm going to close. Hearing none, motion passes. Is there anything else to come before the court? Do you have anything else for some case? Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Well, then make a motion. Motion to adjourn. We got a motion to adjourn. Second. And uh, second, second, second. And all those in favor, we are now adjourned. Thank you.